Hey guys, Nate Tice here from The Athletic Football Show, back again with the series where I'll be looking at the top quarterback prospects for the 2023 NFL Draft. Today, going to be looking at Alabama's Heisman Trophy winning quarterback, Bryce Young. Going to be looking at his strengths, weaknesses, room for improvement, some best team fits, and a historical comparison I'm pretty excited to drop at the end of the show. So let's dive right in and see what Bryce Young brings to the table. The first and foremost thing that stands out when you watch Bryce Young play is his playmaking ability. His ability to ad-lib, create something out of nothing, turn negative plays into first downs or even touchdowns. Um, there's times where he lifts up his teammates, lifts the bar up for the whole offense, creates winning plays even when his teammates are literally and figuratively falling down around him. He can make a guy miss in the hole. He can attack downfield. Here's a play against Ole Miss. He makes a free runner miss in the hole, steps up, holds another defender with his eyes and throws a trick shot and creates a first down out of nothing. It looked like a point guard on a fast break right there. Here's a play against Mississippi State. Guys are covered, it's third down. And he hangs in the pocket, runs around a little bit, finds the throw, keeps his eyes downfield and creates a touchdown. What could have been a field goal or a throwaway or even a negative play like a sack, he created a touchdown out of nothing. Constantly pulling the rabbit out of the hat and creating magic for the offense at Alabama. There's another play right here against LSU. He's almost tackled several times here, tacks downfield, throws another touchdown here, another huge play in a tight game. Another play against here against Ole Miss, comes off the initial read and does a little whirly bird and then finds a throw for a first down. Again, creating these positive plays, not just effective plays, but really chain moving plays, literally chain moving plays or putting points on the board. That is something that is needed at this level. The NFL position is so dynamic now, just like point guards and, and basketball. I'll make that comparison again. There's not really that just that pass first guy anymore. You have to be able to use your legs in some way, shape or form. Don't necessarily just have to be a design runner and, you know, like Josh Allen or Jalen Hurts or Lamar Jackson, but enough with your legs to create positive plays, extend plays, and then once in a while scramble and create a first down when everything else is falling apart around you. That ability to create also applies to how Bryce Young can change arm angles. He'll throw on the move and throw off platform very well, but also when working from the pocket, he'll hang there with a the pass rush coming and throw around the defender or the pass rusher to find that throw. Here's a third down play against Mississippi State again, where he hangs in the pocket, it's a third and short, he changes the arm angle, throws around, creates a first down here. Really, it's a tougher throw than it looks like. Even if it's a short throw, it's still a tough one with a high degree of difficulty because of how he has to get this ball off. On top of the playmaking ability that Bryce Young has, he's also willing to work from the pocket. He'll throw over the middle of the field, which is very important to note given his height, which is something we'll talk about later in this video. But other shorter quarterbacks from the past decade, Kyler Murray, Russell Wilson, Baker Mayfield, have had issues operating over the middle of the field between the numbers. Bryce Young already shows at the college level the ability to throw these dig routes on high-low concepts, pushing the ball, tacking over the middle, stuff that you wouldn't think of a shorter quarterback would be able to do, and he does it consistently. He understands how to move in the pocket, mitigate his height. He finds throwing lanes. He will progress from the pocket, find checkdowns, and work those checkdowns, and he does it consistently. He is not just a big game hunter. He understands how to play quarterback. That play extending ability that I've talked about, the playmaking, applies to when he's operating from the pocket. You know, he does the stuff out of structure, outside the pocket. He's doing the no-look throws. But then there's plays like this one against Mississippi State where he's drifting in the pocket, letting the play extend. Was it the exact design of the play as it was supposed to be? No, but he let his receiver go to work and he layers a great throw in and creates a first down when really there was nothing there originally. These things are all pluses that he can do the true quarterback things that again, translate to the NFL level and again, are good things. The other quote unquote real quarterback thing that Young does well is he's pretty mentally astute pre-snap. Bill O'Brien put a lot on his plate mentally and he was able to handle it week in and week out changing protections, changing the play, getting the running back aligned correctly. A couple of those creative plays that I referred to earlier in this video, that was the post-snap stuff. The pre-snap stuff was just as impressive. Getting the offensive line going, getting the protection right. Here's a great example against LSU, against a blitz look. On third down here, he gets the offensive line going, gets them all sorted out. It's not the prettiest blocking from Alabama, but it's able to wad it up enough to give Young that extra half second to find the running back on the choice route and create an explosive play for Alabama. And on top of all this, he has the throwing ability and a quick throwing motion and the versatility to handle things like RPOs. He can anticipate with this quick throwing motion and really just gives himself more room for error when throwing. 
all this creates a really fun package as a player. Now time for some weaknesses and room for improvement for Bryce Young. He does have some inconsistent footwork and drop back mechanics that he will need to clean up at the next level. He sometimes is on his toes a little too much and a little too narrow with his base, which would cause some accuracy issues. He drifts in the pocket, uh, back in the pocket, getting too deep as he's trying to find throws, like a Madden player holding the joystick back. And the issues with this is it can create unnecessary pressure because his tackles aren't expecting him to be at that landmark. They're just letting the pass rusher go by and there's Bryce Young standing there and they're like, why is that a sack? I, I, I blocked my guy, right? Sometimes he also takes an extra step on his drop back where it'll cause him to feel late or miss a window on a throw. So he doesn't even attempt it because he's off of it and he goes into his creation mode. He'll look sometimes too to bail a little too early, or he seems like he predetermined that he's gonna bail, especially on third and fourth down. And sometimes he needs to let the play breathe because in games like against LSU, the LSU defense was baiting him into doing so, especially on third and fourth down, where they were making him take the fool's gold, where he was like, oh, I can bail all the pocket and create a play here. And then here comes a looping defense alignment or a blitzer just waiting for him. So it turned into a negative play or a throwaway play, or he took a shot. He does take some unnecessary shots because of all this creation stuff that he does. Now the third and fourth down thing is important because his average time to throw jumped three quarters of a second from first to second down to third and fourth down. Now, yes, there are some plays that might be a little deeper on those downs, but that really speaks to what he was doing on those downs where he was instantly going to creation mode, sometimes unnecessarily so. Another thing to note, and this isn't a true weakness, but it must be noted, is that he just has adequate arm strength. And I wouldn't say good, I wouldn't even say above average, but adequate for the NFL level. Now, when he's in a pocket and it's a clean pocket and he can drive on the throw, like those dig examples that we had earlier in this video, it's very good. But there are times when his feet aren't set or he has to throw off platform or when pressure is in his lap and his accuracy and his arm strength kind of wavers and he loses some margin for error because of that. He really has to anticipate everything and throw things with proper timing because again, the room for error isn't great when the arm strength isn't great. The last weakness to note with Young is ironically the biggest weakness to note with Young and that is his size or lack thereof. He would be a true historical outlier at the position if you look at his weight. The low 200s that he weighed in at the combine would already be an outlier. But if you look at his playing weight at Alabama in the low 190s, that would be a true historical outlier at the position. The last quarterback to go in the first round with a playing weight listed under 200 pounds was Jim McMahon in 1982. The last quarterback to go in the first three rounds with a playing weight under 200 pounds was Pat White back in 2009. Now, size is not the end all be all, but there are, are benchmarks at these positions for a reason. Injury concerns are always gonna be a thing with Bryce Young, and he did get banged up in his last year at Alabama. Outliers always exist at these positions, but that is a pretty heavy bet to make in the top five for what would truly be a historical one. As far as best team fit, really any team that needs a quarterback and wants to sell some tickets with his fun and exciting play style. The Carolina Panthers at the top of the draft, they got a good offensive line for him to sit in clean pockets and also keep pressures low. They have Frank Reich as an offensive mind and a bit of a quarterback whisperer that will help him mitigate some of his footwork issues and really add polish to his game. The Houston Texans could use a lot of goodwill as a franchise and a former Heisman Trophy winner will do that. On top of that, they have a decent offensive line for him to you know, grow into the NFL game. Other teams in the top 10, the Detroit Lions, if they need a quarterback of the future that is totally different than Jared Goff or the Las Vegas Raiders in the same boat where they want that exciting play style to build a bridge from, from Jimmy G. All these teams make sense and really anyone that wants to take a chance on him, I understand because of his playmaking ability. As far as pro comparison, it is hard to find one for Young, considering, again, that he's such a historical outlier. So I went with a different historical outlier, and that's Doug Flutie. And this is not a joke. There's a lot of comparisons to be made between these two players. They're both 5'10", around 180 to 190. They're both actually good pocket passers that find throwing lanes, but on top of it, they can pull off some magic when things go askew. Now, Doug Flutie came around the 80s when the NFL wasn't as spread out and passing oriented, which would have been more conducive for his skill set. So he went to Canada and the CFL, won multiple MVPs and Grey Cups, and then came back and made a Pro Bowl with the Buffalo Bills and actually had a pretty long career given his stature. Now, again, it's really, really hard to find a comparison with Bryce Young's play style and his, his size and his stature, but let's make it two of two uh, instead of one of one between Bryce Young and Doug Flutie. 
Thank you guys so much for joining me in my breakdown of Bryce Young. Please like and subscribe to the Athletic Football Show's YouTube channel. We got so much great content already on here and more to come. I'm going to have a breakdown of Will Levis and Anthony Richardson in the upcoming weeks. And we're going to have plenty more draft content, including a live draft show from Kansas City with Robert Mays, myself, and Dane Brugler. So please make sure to check that out, and I'll see you guys next time.